Before we begin, I want to wish a happy life to the person celebrating their birthday today. Without further ado, let's dive right into the storyline. When faced with financial hardship, a couple stumbles upon a GPS coordinate that holds the promise of leading them to stolen gold. In their quest to recover the coins they find themselves teaming up with a mysterious duo of hitchhikers. Together, they venture into the winter wilderness, embarking on an adventure that holds both peril and potential riches. Will and his wife, Dawn, are heading to meet his friend who promised him a job. Unfortunately, upon their arrival, Will discovers that the job is no longer available due to a lack of investors. Will looks visibly depressed upon hearing this news and asks his friend to try and find another job opportunity for him. Meanwhile, Don receives an email from the bank regarding the foreclosure of their house. Desperate for assistance, she tries to reach out to her father for help. However, her father refuses to help them and instead brings up that he already helped them before with mortgage payments. When Will returns to meet his wife, he is reluctant to tell her about the job. So he decides to lie and claim that he got it. On their way home, they stumble upon brother and sister hitchhikers, Lee and Cheryl who are freezing on the side of the road. Will and Dawn don't seem to mind giving them a ride until Cheryl, with an attitude, reveals that she is a prostitute and they are on their way to meet their friend who just got out of prison. They then stopped at the gas station, and Will suddenly got a message that his friend can't find a job for him. Lee sees that Will seems to be struggling to pay for the gas and decides to pay for it. When they are about to leave, Dawn wants to leave them behind, but Will tells her that they paid for the gas. As they continue, Will almost hits an old man in the middle of the road. They then take him to the car. While waiting at the rest area for the police, they discover that the old man is already dead. Lee then takes the old man's wallet and sees his ID, which states that the old man is Cormac Leith. He then takes some cash, telling Will that this is a good karma for trying to save him, but of course, Will disagrees with Lee's actions. Cheryl also finds a note, which apparently contains GPS coordinate. When they are interrogated by the police, they simply state that they found the old man hypothermic in the road and helped him. They don't reveal his name to the police. The police are pleased that they were kind to pick him up and also inform them that they cannot continue their journey because the highway is closed due to black ice and will open in the early morning. They then decide to have a meal together. Not long after, Cheryl searches about Cormac on the internet and an old news report pops out. The news report states that a gang broke into a series of banks in 95, and their haul was 4 million in gold coins. This report catches their attention. Cheryl continues, saying that Cormac was found shot, with the rest of the gang dead around him. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison for that, and he told the police that he had no idea about the gold. After hearing this, Lee and Cheryl persuade Will and Don to go recover the gold coins together. While Will and Don are still in doubt, Lee gives them Cormac's gold coin necklace, and Cheryl shows them the location using a GPS device that she just stole, which is only 30 miles away from the road. After discussing their financial struggles, they agree and decide to stay at the motel until morning. In the morning, they agree to recover the gold together. On their way, Cheryl guides them using GPS to the location. When they arrive at the nearest location from the road, they prepare with minimal equipment, such as a lug wrench and a flare gun. After a while, they seem to enjoy their search. Suddenly, Cheryl stumbles because the snow is deep and hard to walk on. When Lee takes out his knife to make a walking stick, Will asks to use the knife to make nature's snowshoes. As they continue, Will asks Cheryl to take a detour to a route with thin snow and less tiring. Cheryl agrees, and Lee starts asking how they are going to spend their money if they find the gold. Don says that they are going to use it to take their home back and start a family. Cheryl laughs at Don's answer, and it seems Don is annoyed by it. When they finally find the thin snow terrain, they take off their nature snowshoes. But too bad for Will because the knife accidentally punctures his shoe. When struggling with the weather getting colder, they face a cliff in front of them which upsets them. Don then tries to grab the GPS from Cheryl, causing her to slip from the cliff. Thankfully, Cheryl quickly grabs her hands, and with Lee and Will's help, they manage to save Don from falling. Don starts blaming Cheryl, and Cheryl angrily responds that she just followed the arrow in the GPS and didn't know there was a cliff. Seeing them arguing, Lee tries to calm down the situation. Cheryl then tells Lee that she doesn't trust them and should get rid of them when they have a chance. Lee consoles her sister, reassuring her not to worry about them. They then discussing whether to proceed or turn back. Lee believes that the cliff seems to extend for miles in both directions. Despite the challenges, Don insists that they cannot turn back and should continue their quest for the gold. Will then suggests going alone with the GPS to reach the gold faster, but Cheryl refuses to hand him the GPS, suggesting that they might find an alternative route nearby. Don is hesitant to walk along the dangerous cliff edge, 
while Lee proposes giving it a try for half an hour and turning back if they don't find a safe path down. Finally they agree going back into the woods. After two hours of walking and still not finding a way down, Will suggests that both Lee and Cheryl should go back and wait in the truck because they are not protected and have less clothing, even without gloves. Lee considers it, but Cheryl insists on continuing. When Will tries to warn them again, Lee becomes angry and threatens to break Will's jaw. Surprisingly, Don doesn't seem worried if Lee and Cheryl cannot make it. One hour later when they are exhausted and desperate, Don sees a cabin. They break into the cabin, light a fire, and search for necessary items. While Lee prepares a meal, Will examines the map and realizes that the gold they are seeking is near the lake. However, their intrusion is interrupted when the owner of the cabin returns with a rifle and a threatening look. They attempt to explain that they are lost, but the owner is skeptical and strikes Will with his rifle. Lee is about to pull out his knife, but suddenly Don tells the cabin owner that they are searching for gold and hands him the coordinate note. Afraid to reveal the true purpose of their search, Lee decides to deceive the owner by claiming they are participating in a $20,000 gold contest on the radio which the cabin owner believes. The cabin owner takes the note and allows them to leave. Before leaving, Cheryl goes to the bathroom and finds a bottle of whiskey and rat poison on the shelf. As they hurry to leave the cabin, Will grabs a rope. While still arguing, Will decides to go to the cliff. At the cliff, Don is afraid to climb down. After Will reveals that he lied about getting a job, Don finally agrees and starts climbing down, followed by Lee, Cheryl, and then Will. It's getting darker, and snow starts falling. They almost make it to the lake, but suddenly Cheryl got hypothermic. Will then asks Lee to pile up snow, and while Will helps Lee to dig in, he realizes that Dawn has disappeared. Using a torchlight, he goes looking for her. After a while, he finds her and takes her back to the group. Will finally makes a hole in the pile of snow, and they enter and light a candle. In the morning, Will realized that his boot was outside the Quincy and his foot is black and wounded due to gangrene caused by a previous knife injury to his boot. Will doesn't want it to continue because it's too cold, and he believes he will lose his foot if he does. However, Lee, Cheryl, including his wife, refuse to go back. When Cheryl and Lee leave, Don convinces Will to continue, but he remains realistic, thinking that he doesn't want to risk his life for gold that may not be there. While Don sees this as the only way to fix their life, she then continues, and Will goes back alone. Don finally catches up with Lee and Cheryl, while Will goes back, struggling with his injured foot. The weather is getting colder as they finally arrive at the lake, and together they walk on it. Meanwhile, Will arrives at the cliff and contemplates his decision. Not far away from the lake, the GPS starts beeping, and they get excited to dig with all their remaining strength. On the other side, Will also starts to climb up to the cliff. After a while of digging, they feel desperate because they haven't found the gold yet, similar to Will who is hanging on the rope exhausted. Not long after, Don notices something, and they dig effortlessly. When they manage to pull up the box, they can't believe their eyes that the gold coins are in front of them. They then slowly take the gold and put it into whatever they can find to fill. In the other scene, we can see Will managing to go up and back to the cabin. He then enters the cabin with an axe while keeping an eye out for the owner. He suddenly finds the owner dead on the floor with a whiskey bottle beside him. Will then figures out that the cause of his death is the whiskey containing rat poison. Meanwhile, Cheryl is still collecting the coins, and Don is leaving. Cheryl then tries to kill Don but Don manages to get away and takes the flare gun. Back to Will, he seems to be preparing to save Don and takes a rifle with him. Meanwhile, Lee tries to convince Cheryl to leave the box of coins, but Cheryl insists on taking it. Don is seen walking in the middle of the frozen lake, freezing. When her sight starts to blur, she takes off her glove and throws out the gold to rub her eyes. Behind her, Lee and Cheryl struggle to drag the box of gold. Cheryl couldn't take it anymore and stumbled. Lee told her that he heard the cabin owner's snowmobile nearby. Cheryl then revealed that she had poisoned the owner's whiskey, and he must be dead. She asked Lee to kill Don to leave no witnesses of the gold. Lee hurried to chase Don, and when he caught up to her, he asked for her help to save Cheryl and offered all the coins. However, it appeared the gold was now worthless, and Don continued walking. When Lee returned to Cheryl, he found that she had frozen to death. Crying and consumed by evil, he decided to kill Don. He chased Don with his knife, but luckily Will arrived just in time on the cliff and saw Don being chased by Lee. He shouted and took shots at Lee several times but couldn't hit him. Don ran into the woods, and Lee managed to catch her. As he was about to stab her, she hit him with a rock. Lee managed to get up and grab Don's jacket as she tried to cross the river. Suddenly, Don's jacket slipped from her body, causing Lee to fall behind and his head hit a rock resulting in his death. Meanwhile, Will tried to climb down the cliff but unfortunately fell, though he remained alive. Don, in desperation, 
took out all her gold and fell, lying on the frozen lake. She then heard the sound of a rifle, knowing that Will was still alive. She shot the flare gun, and Will noticed that his wife was also alive. After that, both of them passed out. After a while, Will seemed to be rescued and lifted with a stretcher. The scene then shifts to Will in the hospital. The doctor wakes him up, telling him that he is in the hospital, and the police want to talk to him. During the interrogation by the police, he finds out that his wife, along with Lee, Cheryl, and the cabin owner, is dead. When asked by the police what they were looking for out there, Will says that they were searching for gold. He then asks the police if they found it, and the police says no. The police then call her colleague, informing him that Will doesn't know about the discovered gold. Additionally, Cormac was cremated as John Doe. The police and her colleagues seem to have intentions of looking for the gold. The end. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more interesting movie recaps. See you in the next video.